Welcome back to The Legal Ease Show. I'm your host, Ryan Peabody. My colleague, Greg Treat, is here with me Hello. today. And we have a special guest today. Uh, welcome to Tanner Shepherds. We appreciate you being here. Uh, Tanner is a recently retired a professional baseball player. So today, uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, your experience in the bigs, uh, what that was like as you finished up your career and making the transition from sort of that pro baseball player being on the road, uh, what that lifestyle looks like with you and your family and how you kind of implemented all that. And then uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, once that uh, career was concluding, which, you know, the life of a pro athlete is not a, like a normal career, right? It's, yeah. it's like it's, it's go, go, go all the time. And then, but at some point you got to think to yourself, hey, how am I going to transition to entrepreneurialism, to what business? What am I going to do with the rest of my life? Yeah, mm -hmm. what am I going to do? How am I going to team myself up? Obviously, you're not an old guy, right? You're not, you're not 60, 70 years old when you finish a career, mm -hmm. like maybe a traditional doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, some kind of a traditional vocation. So uh, we'd love to hear about what that looks like. Yeah, I look forward to it. But uh, yeah, but thanks, thanks for being, being on the show today. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I appreciate it. So hey, let's, let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the, the first thing, uh, you know, kind of getting going as a pro athlete, I, I know a, a tremendous amount of time and effort goes into it. Um, what was what was it like kind of getting into that world and how, how did you make it to the to the bigs? I mean, I think everyone has quite the long path and process to get there. Yeah. Um, you know, it started off as just like a small dream. I bloomed late um, when I got into college. I kind of transferred to a pitcher, went to Fresno State. Um, and then I kind of blossomed and grew into my man body in a sense. Sure. Started throwing the ball a little bit harder and started turning some heads with uh, a fastball. And it kind of took me on this route of professional baseball and uh, the kind of the life that I was able to live. Yeah. Awesome. So when, when we talk about your, your career, who did you play for? What were your years? Is there any kind of the, the basic facts for people that may not be familiar? With yeah. You? So um, originally I was drafted three times. Um, once out of high school by the Baltimore Orioles out of the 27th or 28th round. Um, again, the second round by the Pittsburgh Pirates, a junior out of Fresno State. And then I went to independent ball in St. Paul, Minnesota, where I got drafted in the supplemental first by the Texas Rangers um, in 2009. I spent the next 10 years in their organization and seven years in the big leagues with them. Um, with the I'm, Rangers. With the Rangers. Here in Texas. In Texas, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, pretty rare bird to not have to be traded and transfer like a lot of other yeah, um, pro athletes kind of have to move around. I was very lucky to be able mm -hmm. to set my roots down here in South Lake. Um, and then I played one year in Japan before retiring at 32. So your, your last year was in Japan before yeah. you retired. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in your time in the, in the, in the, in the pros, uh, how much time and effort and energy, I mean, is it pretty much just all in all your time? Yeah, I mean, we definitely have to make a lot of sacrifices. For instance, yeah. uh, during that nine month period where we're kind of in season, um, unless like a close family member dies, uh, you're stuck. You get 72 hours if you have a baby that is born. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you an example. When I was playing in Japan, um, I spent 48 hours before I had to fly back to Japan and, and I met him six weeks later. So, mm. you know, you make a lot of sacrifices. Oh, wow. um, it's all your time. For your kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely a heavy schedule, um, 162 games in a single season. Wow. That's not including spring training mm -hmm. and that's not including the prep time that you have to do before. Um, so we had like a small window of the holidays that we got, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, where we got to travel around the country to kind of catch up with family. But um, we did the best we could during the time while I was playing. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we know a lot of people and we certainly have a lot of clients that are just that kind of that, that C-suite executive that follow a similar pattern to what you're talking about. Right. Especially the sales guys. Mm -hmm. So they're out on the road. They're doing their thing. And it sounds to me like that's that's very much a similar mentality. You're, I mean, you're you're, you're flying around, you're driving around, yeah. you're all over the country. Yeah, I mean, yeah, half ball. of those 162, um, so eight, you know, 81 of those games were on the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so it's a lot of suitcases, a lot of moving around. Yeah. So you're married. Married. Did your did your wife and then later on your kids? Did they did they kind of join you on the road, or did they meet you at certain locations, or did you really kind of use? South Lake here and the DFW area is your home base. 
and then just keep coming back? I mean, what, what, what pattern did you get into? Yeah, I mean, my kids are fairly young, um, four and two. So really, they didn't get the blunt of any much of that travel. Mm -hmm. um, we set our roots here in South Lake. It was easy to travel from one coast to the other, a central hub. Yeah. Playing in Texas clearly um, weighed me on that decision a little bit. But sure. um, we were definitely happy to to set our roots here. I'm a California born and raised, so. Where in California? Uh, Laguna, California. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's so yeah, you're area. just up the road from me growing up. So yeah, that's right. You understand that it's different kind of ideologics and views on, on the world. And um, we kind of really connected with, you know, that conservative family-based friendliness of Texas. Yeah, yeah that, that's actually something interesting. We're gonna to touch on that. In, uh, in part two, we talking about being in a good location and mm. uh, building your business in a good location. Obviously you stayed here, not just because you're familiar with the area, I'm sure, but it's a, it's a pretty good business environment out here. So we'll get to that mm -hmm. in, in uh, yeah, probably in part two. I think, I think we'll yeah. push that to part two. So, so you're playing in the big, you're pitching, um, you're, you're traveling a lot, you're, you're building your family at the same time. And then you said you played over in Japan. Was that the last year you played at kind of that pro level? Yeah, I mean, I played that next year. I bounced around in an independent league for a, <laughs> a month or so before yeah. calling F it quits for it goods. Out. Yeah, mm -hmm. just kind of seeing what was transitioning, if the body was going to hold up. Um, unfortunately, I think my body ran its course. So it was. What's the lifetime of a pitcher in the pros? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what know. the average is. It's not, it's not very long. It's pretty rare for you to be able to, to stick in the big leagues. It's one yeah, of the hardest I, I see some of the old guys, old guys, right, that are right. pitching, but very rare. It's usually yeah. younger guys that are throwing, throwing the heat. Yeah, I think uh, definitely the way baseball is moving, it's definitely moving towards a younger culture. Um, yeah. So you're not seeing a whole lot of old timers out there throwing very often. Was, was, was there, uh, who, who, who were some of the, Kind of before we get into the entrepreneurial stuff, I'm right. just curious, who were some of the hardest guys to pitch against? Well, me personally? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess if I connect with some people in Texas, <laughs> Justin Smoke, uh, he was original Texas Ranger first rounder. Yeah. Um, he owned me. I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> he had like four home runs off me. I don't know. Yeah. But it was it was one of those guys where I was like, oh, geez, come on. Yeah. And you were throwing high 90s even into the hundreds, right? Yeah. So these guys are... Oh yeah, yeah. These guys they get paid a lot of money to, to hit that ball <laughs> yeah. for a, a long way. So. Yeah. Do you, do you ever do you ever pitch uh, against some of the some of the, the the very renowned guys that are still playing today, like uh, like Trout and those kind of guys? Yeah, I, I pitch against Trout and Pull Holes and you know some of those stars. Yeah. Some of them I did well, and some of them I didn't. I was I was uh, you know I know you're not going to want to admit this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'm I knew. The spot. Yeah, you are going to put me on the spot. <laughs> I was I was looking up uh, some of your your record a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that I didn't know before we, mm. we got in here, and you had a pretty good success uh, against uh, against Trout, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got some good numbers he's, he's against a that guy. He's California boy. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's uh, yeah. Well, well not he plays for the Angels originally. Yeah, plays yeah. for the Angels. Right. I lives, uh, you know, I don't know where he lives. But yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I, I had his number. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. That that that's uh, that, that's got to be exciting. What a, what a unique experience and career that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Be. I mean, it was big. I wish, you know, as a young man, I think you don't sit there and appreciate those. Yeah, those sure. little moments as mm -hmm. much and yeah. um, looking back I, I, I wish I kind of relished it a little bit more because mm -hmm. it, it does go by quick. So were there any moments that, that you could share with us briefly that, that really stuck in your mind as kind of career defining? I think it was when I went to Fenway for the first time. Oh, that's it was just cool. like gives you the chills thinking about it. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. That's like legendary. Yeah stuff. it was just like oh my gosh this is it. We're here. <laughs> yeah that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. What, 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 what yeah that that that's uh yeah, the, the, those are unique experiences. I I have some friends that uh, spent some time. That some of them that are still in the military, right. and uh, they've traveled all around the world. Now they they you know their their pay level is a little bit different, of yeah, course. Yeah. But as far as their experience and traveling around and getting a unique experience as as a younger person, mm -hmm. um, you know it, it was it was hard for them and their family, just like you're describing. But uh, you come away with these kind of these unique experiences, I right? Mean, yeah, walking onto the mound at Fenway had to be like, wow, this is mm -hmm. this is pretty cool. Yeah, and it's something that you know only a, only a handful of people ever get a chance to do. Right. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky that I was able to you know take my body to that level. Yeah. Um, I did make a lot of sacrifices. You know, missing a lot of weddings, cousins, yeah. get-togethers. So, and what's your workout stuff? routine? Just kind of thirty thousand foot view. We don't need to go into the details. Right. This is not a workout video. 
Uh, but what's your workout routine to stay in shape and to be able to perform consistently? Yeah. I mean, so while from, you're on the road, while you're moving around. Yeah, from April to September really is the in season. So that's kind of like a maintenance time where you're kind of maintaining what you built in that off season. Okay. You kind that of take sense. like a four week period where you kind of rest that body and then you start getting into like heavy lifting and you'll be lifting about five times a week um, with two recovery days in there to properly build. But it's just focusing on kind of stacking your weight and getting that body ready for that 162. And then once you get into season, it's kind of just maintaining and yeah. being able to stay on. So when you get, you know, if, if you guys get all the way to the playoffs or even, you know, beyond that into into the big show, mm -hmm. uh, I, I imagine you're starting to feel that fatigue from the season. You're yeah. Like, okay, a, we can do this. It's, can it's a grind. I mean, I think the travel plays a big part of that yeah, you're sure. jumping on planes like right after games going to the next city um the kind of night hawks with baseball night games um you know the games are done around 10 30. Mm -hmm. yeah you know, it takes an hour to get out of there hour to eat and you know you're back in your hotel at two yeah uh, waking then, up for a day game in the morning uh, so it's just fast turn turnarounds i mean it, it kind of weighs on you a little bit but again it's a lot of fun you're playing a game yeah so. Um, you know, I know r right now the, the professional sports are kind of wonky because of all this COVID stuff going on. What do, you, what do you think about these guys out there playing kind of without a stadium full of people? Oh, man, is I don't it, know. I don't know what that feeling is. That's got to yeah. be. I mean, I think most players could agree that pulling that energy from the crowd is a, is a big piece of it. Yeah, um, sure. So not having that kid is probably a pretty surreal experience. Really? Is, is, for them, it's probably, uh, I, I imagine, I'm just guessing, it's, it's almost like playing like a practice game. You got to really yeah. put yourself in the headspace that, hey, this is an actual. This is it. This is the real On the deal. record game. Here. Right. Yeah. So I'm sure they're battling a little bit of that for sure. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. So you're starting to, you know, you got maybe one or two years left. You know, you're, you're, you got to be thinking to yourself, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire at some point. Mm -hmm. How far out did you kind of see that coming? When I hurt my knee and I noticed it wasn't recovering the way that I felt like it should be responding mm -hmm. after all the work being put in, I kind of saw the writing on the wall in a sense. Um, so I guess it was in 2017, 18, yeah, it's about two years before I actually called it quits. So I was like, uh, I don't know how much longer this body could just mm -hmm. take this or how much I'm comfortable being uncomfortable in a sense. Right. Um, so yeah, I always kind of thought we always, my wife and I kind of brainstorm on what we wanted to do. Yeah. We always knew I'd we'd be at a younger age when I was done with baseball. Mm -hmm. And we always had kind of big aspirations to kind of dive into the health and wellness of individuals. So um, that just kind of what took us what on What you're path. doing now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about that because you're yeah. doing some pretty, pretty unique stuff that's, uh, that I was, I was pretty impressed with, with your, your kind of sharing oh, thank you. before we jumped onto the show. Yeah. So you, you see it coming and you're living here in South Lake, Texas. Uh, we, we live here. We, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's obviously where the office is too. So we're pretty close to you. Uh, I like the area for a lot of reasons, but you made this your home base. Mm. You know, you could have made the decision to, to move out of the area or stay here. Yeah. And I know you've opened a business here now. You've got big plans. What kind of went into the decision of staying here and why here? Yeah. So my wife and I, we're the only ones in Texas. So our, all of our family members, all of our cousins basically are in California. Okay. Um, it would have been easy to move it would have, to I mean, we, everyone else was telling us like, why are you guys staying in Texas? But I don't know, we just felt in so much with, you know, the lifestyle and just the niceness of the people and just the environment, community. Um, I mean, South Lake, mm -hmm. I haven't been to many places that are much better than that. So. We felt like we set our people, roots here. Yeah, we made a lot of great friends. Community. Yeah, everything, yeah. all of the above, just the convenience of everything. Because this is not an urban environment here. Right. This is very suburban. Yeah, and we love it. I Do mean, you? yeah, okay. everything about it. I mean, it's, just it sold us. Yeah, yeah it just sold us, and we just we knew we wanted to have our kids go to the school systems here. Yeah, we we feel um, the same way. Yeah, so I think that was a big part of our decision, and mm -hmm. we're lucky enough to be able to, um, you know, have a home here and mm -hmm. and do that. So. Okay, so you're, you're, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus right on your last year of pro ball. Okay. So <clears throat> you made the decision to play for Japan. Was that going to be a one-year deal? Was that going to be a multi-year deal? There was an option on that deal. Okay. And they decided not to. So okay. that so, was it. So the right decision was you, you kind of saw it coming. Right. You kind of made that decision. 
the the industry made that decision alongside you, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think there's a long combination of a lot of things, but yeah. Yeah, it's a big combination. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you're, you're, you're wrapping it up. At that time, are you starting to think to yourself, what's the next step after I retire? Yeah, I mean. Had you started to think about that or was it just on you? So when I was driving home from the last time I packed my bags, I called the facility where we're at now. Yeah on my way home. I don't know, it just felt right. It was like someone put it on a platter and was like, all right, you're ready to move on to the next thing. Um, and I felt like it was one of those things I couldn't just sleep on or sit on because it was a good opportunity. So we just decided to just jump right in. So, but in terms of like the, the dream, the desire, you said that you and your wife had wanted to help people with fitness. When, when, when did that originate and when did that develop? And you, in order to be able to call a place and say go, right. you put a lot of thought and, and, and aspirations and you knew kind of what you wanted. How, how, where did you develop the specifics of this is where, where, where I'm wanting to go? I guess um, in 2016, when I, when I had that major knee surgery, I, I found out that I had an autoimmune disease. Mm. Um, so I really did a deep dive of like, why are these issues coming up inflammation wise? And so that kind of made us dive deeper into like the health and wellness of every individual and kind of look at that, the bigger picture of things. Um, from there, it just kind of sparked our interest and we've always kind of wanted to create a wellness fitness type environment. And it kind of just blossomed. We didn't think it exactly would turn out the way the modalities that we're offering right now, but we wanted like the full combination of everything to be able to provide a health and wellness product that people can better themselves at. So you, you've got this business, collective movement, you've taken what you learned as a pro, you've applied it to the private business. So we're gonna pause right here. This is gonna be the end of part one <clears throat> with, uh, with Tanner. We're gonna come back with part two. So tune in for that one. Uh, like and subscribe, and in part two, we're gonna talk about uh, the transition over to that business, the uniqueness of his business, and what he's learned as a pro athlete and implementing that for a, uh, a health and wellness uh, fitness concept that I've never seen before. So check us out in part two. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching The Legal E Show.